What is going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. We have a guest on this morning who's been here for a few times, and he's up to 335,000 followers and a booming online business that he and he dropped drop shipping for good. Let's hear why. Tyler, what up, man? Hey, man. How you doing today? Welcome back to the show, man, for like the third or fourth time. I know. It's great to be back. You know, you've got a... An, it's a, like a new you for 2023. You got the stash going. I love it. <laughs> I mean, the room. How has life changed for you, man? I mean, not just, you know, your appearance looks different, but tell us about the the quality of your life and what's been going on since you started in a nutshell, just so people could have an idea of how life is different, especially since we're now going into a new year anyways. I know it's not, it's crazy. It's a, a new year already, but, uh, yeah, life has changed significantly for me. Um, you know, I used to, you know, I was a banker before I was doing my online business. And, you know, um, I had no free time. I can spend time with friends. I can spend time with family. And now I have an abundance of time. I almost don't even know what to do with my time. So I, I guess that's a great thing to have, you know, a great issue to have, you know. Um, do you have kids? No, I do not. Hey! I'm thinking this guy, no, but just because you don't have kids doesn't mean you have more time, but I, I get it. It's like, dude, you, 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 you take the 10 hours that you were dedicating to a job before sitting in traffic, being there and then coming home. And now I don't know about you, but I mean, I just drove over to the office, picked a shirt out of my, this is the most wrinkled shirt. I just pulled it out of the back seat. It was like under my kit, my daughter's car seat. And it was like scrunched under there because it's like at this point, you know, I realize that it doesn't really matter. It's just I can I've sort of disconnected from all of the social expectations, even that I look a certain way, um, yes. you know, and it's like, do you feel yet disconnected from the corporate kind of normal what sounds to be like the rat right. I mean, the banker, dude, that's pretty rat racy. Do you feel fully disconnected from that? Now you said you have more time than you know what to do. That's a big statement. Yeah. Uh, I, I truly do feel more disconnected than I've ever. I mean, I had to wear, you know, a suit to my, to my job every single day. And now I'm, I'm in, I'm in sweats right now. You know, Cause like, <laughs> I'm like, ah, no one, no one can see me. So I, I so it's just like, it's, it's just crazy. Uh, I mean, when I film my content, you know, my lower half might be just wearing pajamas because I know no one's ever going to see it, you know? So I, I, it's completely different from when I was working. Well, I guess I was three years ago. It'll be three years ago in November. Wow. So three yeah. years ago, what happened? Did you cut, run into us? Had you already been online? Can you remind us of how you actually got started? So we don't just see the the end of the movie, but we, we also get to understand what happened at the beginning too. Yeah. So like you said earlier, I dropped drop shipping. So, um, I did try. So I tried so many side hustles, um, over the span of maybe five years from today. And ultimately it wasn't until I found you guys that everything kind of changed for me. Um, I had heard about you and I was like, okay, well, you know what, if I take the time, if I actually dedicate the time and learn these skills and I'll be honest, I mean, I did struggle for a couple of months, but after month three, I started making $10,000 per month um, on autopilot. It was, you know, it was just crazy because my Instagram blew up and uh, I, I do want to talk about, I do, I focus, I love my Instagram, but like I'm focusing now a lot on Facebook reels. I've grown like 40 K followers in the last uh, month. So I think that's the next, I mean, I know you guys already know, but it's, it's, it's the, it's the place to be, you know, I, I prefer to be over TikTok immensely. Uh, I, I wouldn't even mess around with TikTok. I would mess around with Facebook reels. If you want to make your money online today. Wow. Big statement, brother. Big statement. You come, you drop a bombs today. You must, you must have got some sleep last night. <laughs> <laughs> you come in here with those absolutes. <laughs> Shit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Man. I mean, you're, you're, you're in the trenches out there doing it. That's what you're seeing. I mean, so that's why, why the show is so important and it's relevant because things can change so fast. And I think we began to see the kind of pickup with 
Facebook Reels a couple of months ago. And, you know, Josh Smith did a wonderful challenge for us around Facebook Reels. I think that was over six months ago, maybe almost a year. Right. But, um, yeah, it seems like people are still not really kind of all in on creating content there and still absolutely, yes, are, are very focused on TikTok. I think it's because TikTok's maybe more fun for a lot of people to be on. So they maybe naturally gravitate towards that from a creator standpoint because exactly. that they're, they, they're attracted to it from a consumer standpoint. How do you look at where you spend your time? Like, am I going to spend my time really focused on building this Facebook profile in my email list? Am I really going to focus on building my TikTok and Instagram with maybe some slight kind of uh, activity in a Facebook group? Like, how did you find... Or how have you or how are you settling on, um, okay, this is what I'm doing right now and I'm really going to focus on just this. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about how you decide to focus on a certain strategy? So, so it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, I mean, let me just take, kind of take, it, uh, take you through a day of when I make a content. I, I wake up maybe around 9 o'clock. Um, I get a shower. I research content for maybe an hour or two and then – Basically, it, it's the same every week for the most part. Um, I will make all of my content on TikTok. I use TikTok as purely a place to create content. And if it goes, if stuff goes viral, it's great. It's cool. I, you know, whatever. But then I use an, an app in SnapTik. I think we've talked about that before on here. Oh, yeah. Um, and I just repurpose all of that content onto Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest and YouTube shorts. Um, also YouTube shorts is also a great way to explore your business, but I can get into that later. Um, but yeah, so basically I just repurpose everything. Um, I have 900 videos saved of me on my, on my phone, uh, over the last, over the last year and a half, uh, that I've been doing this. And, uh, yeah, so I just basically go through that. And then I just repost on Facebook Reels. And the best part now is I'm not only making money from affiliates, I'm also making money from Facebook. Facebook Reels is paying me. I made $1,200 this last month from just posting on Facebook Reels. Mm. They're starting to pick, they're starting to do what YouTube did, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know what built plat the YouTube platform, right? Was them paying everybody to post content by, you know, when you, for those of you who don't know why all these kids or whatever people are posting videos on YouTube is because, you know, one thing we don't talk about a lot in this community is how you can monetize those accounts directly, like how the actual company will pay you to post content on the platform. And the reason why we don't talk about that a lot is because it's, if you're doing what we teach anyways, and you're in, you, you're creating valuable content and building up digital real estate and so forth, and you're building up these accounts. And by digital real estate, I, I mean like a you know various different pieces of you know accounts. Basically, I mean these are all like kind of if you think about it, rental properties that are kind of that you didn't even have to buy. You just had to put in the sweat equity, and they kind of paid you a they'll, they'll pay you in in different ways, but. Yes, you can monetize it through just driving traffic for, into a link. You also can monetize it on YouTube. And now Facebook is paying yeah. creators to based on the amount of views that their videos get. I know. It's, it's crazy. So it's just like, you know, if you really take what you teach in your course and apply it, I mean, you're going to have multiple income streams without, you know, even really trying even harder than you have to. Yeah, and in, in a, a big data list to boot if you've been collecting those email addresses, and that's the oh, big, yeah. that's the big reason why we teach what we teach is because there's a lot of YouTubers and a lot of influencers out on the internet who are not building an email list and who are not monetizing through the core four. That's what's different about what we teach. In case anybody is wondering. Because again, there's plenty of influencers out there. There's plenty of YouTubers out there. And they're like, you know, you want to talk about one in a million success stories? I mean, there's one Mr. Beast for how many ever, you know, different YouTube channels. And that guy's, you know, got a billion subscribers and all this. But 
continuously creating long form video on YouTube that's really entertaining is 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 not easy. So what we do is simultaneously build smaller pieces of real estate, but be gener- be building that email list. So in the off chance you lose one of those rental properties, you lose that TikTok account, you lose that YouTube channel, you still have a both an audience and a way to monetize those audience through the core four. And that's, I think, kind of the big dip. And Tyler, what happened was I started to meet a lot of the influencers or YouTube and YouTubers and realized yeah. they were actually struggling financially because they didn't, they they were they only knew about posting content on YouTube, being a YouTuber, and waiting for YouTube to pay them based on their views. And they just uh. didn't know the other parts of how to build an email list, how to do affiliate marketing, and even how to take their own information and sell it via courses, coaching, or events. And I've seen so many YouTubers and stuff over the years develop those skills and just blow their business up because now they're not just entertaining, they're actually edutaining, integrating a little bit of edu- edu- uh, education Yes. And selling things on the back end and also building an email list to continue to sell. You know, how thankful are you that you learn those skills and are not just out on the YouTube grind right now, trying to be a, you know, really relies on you kind of being a total goofball and really just being entertaining in, in most cases, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And it's funny though, um, you mentioned losing one of those rental properties because a couple of months ago, so I drove out to California um, in my Tesla. Uh, a couple months ago, um, and I stayed out there for a month. I stayed out in Irvine, um, which is really nice. Um, and then I got back, and it was it was great. I was I was riding a high basically. Um, and then I lost my YouTube channel, yeah. and it, it had just hit 100k. So I, a YouTube short went viral, and I gained uh, like 100k followers or subscribers, I guess. And so I lost it. But luckily, I had my other accounts that have been able to, you know, uh, keep everything going for me. But, you know, that's the thing with these sometimes with these social media accounts, they don't disclose why you, you, you've you lost your account. And that's exactly what happened with me, unfortunately. But now I'm, you know, I've I've started back up again. I have I'm reuploading on my videos again. And I'm, you know, basically it's just. I don't stop. I, I mean, it was definitely discouraging, but I do not stop because I know how important this business is and how much money I can make with this business. Yeah. And you also have an email list as well, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if you do a great job of getting people on your email list, if you lose an account, those are all the most interested people. You just can say, hey, folks, go and follow me at this TikTok account or go and follow my content at this YouTube channel. And it's 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 a lot easier to, you know, if you have a, a, a you know a single place to be able to communicate with people, that's why we talk. That's why we build email lists. That's why we drive traffic to landing pages. And this has been a, a, a strategy that I've used. Marketers have used for the almost the entire 10 years that I've been doing this. And it's been the single difference maker between the YouTubers who are just in, if you were only a YouTuber and you only knew enter, being entertaining on videos and video editing, and you lost that channel with no additional digital marketing skills, you would be done basically. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's kind of funny. You mentioned that because like a couple of years ago, before I found all of this, I wanted to be one of those fancy, funny YouTubers. I, I wanted to be like a, a video game uh, uh, let's player, you know, like PewDiePie or Markiplier. Yeah. And I, w- I didn't have the knowledge for the back end. So I was just losing money. I wasn't, I was struggling financially because I was still going to my job and I was like, why am I not getting results? Why am I not monetized on YouTube yet? And it's so like, if you just focus on one social media platform, you will, you you have to focus on the whole ecosystem basically and build a community that will follow you no matter what happens that's a great that's a great in the the social media uh, where everybody spends their time the majority of their time is a big ecosystem 
<coughs> and it's not that many places. You can go and look at the sites in on the internet that get the most traffic. And besides the porn sites, <laughs> I'm just sorry to say. No, no, uh, but but besides them, you look at the social media platforms, and that's where the majority of people are spending their time. So, you know, to be able to, you know, what you're doing, which has been pretty much the strategy that most of the top uh, marketers in this, you know, in this industry are using these business models are doing, which is using TikTok as that kind of primary place to create that initial content and then and then very important saving all of those to your phone and then oh, yeah. putting all that content i remember i heard you say you had 700 videos saved as you're posting on TikTok, you're making sure that you're saving that content uh, offline somewhere so it's safe that's your asset folder that's your media asset folder that's very important you can reuse all of this content next year you really can you can just can. Yep. years worth of content and then you just kind of reuse it it's a beautiful thing you can go on vacation that way you can take breaks that way and it looks like you're still going but then you run it through a plat a, a thing like SnapTick or whatever and now because all the platforms are so kind of like, you know, copycat, um, which you can see businesses like that anyways. Everybody in our niche thinks that, well, everybody's just copycat people and all this. No, everybody copycats everywhere. It's business. You know, it's just the way that life is. Um, right. Original ideas are, are, you know, who has one anymore? I don't know. But, you know, they, it's like all these platforms take content the same exact way. They just looked at TikTok and were like, God, that's really killing it. Let's do the same thing. So now for yeah. us, it's easy because you can just take a piece of content and repurpose it the same way that we do with this show. We strip the audio. We, we put it on podcast. We take the video, put it on YouTube. We take clips. Now we're running them in reels. So yeah. you really can systematize. There's not that many different ways you, you need to create content. You can really create it once and then just not only kind of spread it around, but like you said, 700 videos you have saved as, as kind of keeping some powder dry in case you're sick one week or hell, just want to post videos all this year of ones that you did let, I mean, dude, that's, exactly. that's powerful to have that much. And also to hear that you've, is that 700 that you've done total or 700 you've done that you haven't posted yet? That's 700 that, that I have saved. That's not because like, it's, it's time consuming to go through. I, Cause like, I want to go through all of my TikTok accounts because I have multiple TikTok accounts and go through and save every single video. Yeah. But it, that's definitely that's definitely over a thousand videos, so I might hire a VA for that. So, but uh, yeah, that's definitely over a thousand videos. And I, and the thing is, yeah, I could, I could definitely if I just wanted to take the whole year off now, mm -hmm. and I just never posted nothing again. Yeah, I could because I could just hire a VA to do it now, which is great. I actually actually did that on Fiverr. I, I spent I had too much money on Fiverr. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and then I could just I mean, have them repurpose services, the content. Right? You mean buying oh, yeah. things and, and things for people to do for you on your business? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I right now, I mean, I have people. I'm, I've hired people to make some logos for me and edit some videos for me. And I'm actually going to be dabbling into YouTube automation here soon. So I mean, there's a bunch of stuff. I'm 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 basically just I'm like ah, I'll let somebody else who knows what they're doing do it because. You, you obviously know what you're doing. So and and I don't you have the money to be able to afford that, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's, it, it's nice. So I can, I can kind of just sit back right now because of all the money that I've, uh, I've made with this online business and I can be like, okay, well, how should I re-strategize for the new year? And that's basically what I've been doing. I, for the last, um, from like December 20th to the first, I kind of just took a little break on Instagram and everything. And I was just like, well, what can I do? How can I really, you know, change up how I've been selling things? And so I created some digital assets. And um, so that's pretty much my plan for the year. You know, eBooks, uh, that's, that's really all I'm going to say. Like, that's, that's the yeah. key. And they have all my affiliate links in them. And, you know, my, yeah. favorite, my favorite training course. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, man, uh, I think we're going to do the same thing this year is really kind of teach people more how to customize their own lead magnets and stuff and 
you know, when you have an opt-in page that has something that's unique that people haven't seen, it's it's just your and it's and it's done correctly the way that we teach them and the way that we have them here. It's just having something different than everybody else. You know, exactly. when you have when you're giving away uh, an ebook that you can so easily make, and I mean nowadays an ebook folks can be a Google Doc that when they when they opt in, there's just a button or a link that says access the ebook here. And it's just a Google doc. I mean, folks, we overcomplicate yeah. this. I mean, really there's this kind of big trend amongst a lot of digital marketers right now and copywriters who are, are selling a lot off of Google docs. They're just, you know, they're, they're not even creating web pages. They're not even using a funnel builder. They're just writing the sales letter in Google doc and just emailing their email list and sending them right to the Google doc. So the, 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 the tools in which we use to deliver these things such as an ebook don't need to be complicated. Of course, a lot of people use Canva too, but what's one or two quick tips or, or takeaways that you've learned about using free giveaways, AKA lead magnets, AKA free gifts on that landing page in giving something unique away in exchange for people's email address. So basically, um, I mean, I, when I, when I started doing my, the, the free ebook giveaway, um, I see everyone do that. I did it for a little while. I, I kind of changed things up a little bit this year, but um, you can't expect you're going to get a lot of people that kind of just signed up for the ebook, and and then they they don't they don't actually care about whatever you're offering. Right. Okay. So you, you just got to keep that in mind. Like, yeah, I, I mean, my um, my opt in rate jumped up to about fifty percent when I started doing the the ebook, and so I was like, wow, I'm really collecting a lot of emails. And yeah. all of these, it, and um, so, yeah, I mean, as far as advice, I mean, just make sure it's a quality ebook. I feel like if it's quality, it's got your name on it, it's got your face on it. Uh, like I said, I hired someone on Fiverr. Mine was, it was perfect, you know, uh, and it's got and all my kind of the, That's kind of the important thing is, is, is right, is like <clears throat> that image of the book, right? It's like. That image of the book is kind of important, but it's it's weird, dude. I mean, you know, I've I've created different different offers over the years, um, and you know, it the graphics, the graphics, like the actual prettiness of the graphic. Like, let me show you something here, real quick. Yeah. Like this was this was a offer that I made for um, for uh, for network marketers. Okay. And it, this was this was me selling um, a course, uh, basically a, a five video course. And you can see down here, I'm going to show you the assets. So like I gave a visual of what they were going to get, even though when I when I deliver the training, it's actually just on another web page and the videos are just on the page. But that little graphic right there is important. You know what I mean? Like right. the same, the same thing right here, like this little graphic that shows the physical thing. It's kind of like, it's kind of like if you go over to like our online, let me see if I can. Let me see if I can get this. So even if you go to our page, like you see that we use graphics on the page. Those those little graphics that show, you know, something that some, like they're going to it shows the thing they, they're really useful. And I think when I think about going and using like a, a site like Fiverr or something to 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 make me something, this is definitely one of the things that I would ask somebody to make. That's probably the most important graphic that needs to be designed for you if you're going if you're going to give away an ebook. Because you would, by showing the visual of the thing that you're giving, it can give somebody a little bit. And then you would just write, you know, ebook gets delivered in digital form, right? Exactly. But it, it's powerful to give, especially on the internet where everybody thinks everything's fake or they're so skeptical, to have a little graphic made to kind of signify that. I'm actually giving something away here and it's not bullshit. It's, it's a book. I'm, I'm just going to give you the digital version on the, on the next page, not the actual physical book. 
Right, exactly. Uh, it's funny though, uh, I, from taking a look at that, it actually reminded me of something that I'm actually going to start implementing, um, but like free bonuses. I'm going to incentivize, uh, start incentivizing people to buy some of my offers with a free bonus that I have created. Absolutely. And I think, and, and I think that's going to be a game changer for me as well for this year. I've already started seeing a lot of people do it, so I figured I'd jump on it. Absolutely. Free bonuses. There's a couple of things that are really, really powerful uh, in when in getting people to buy things and actually move on them, right? Bonuses are definitely one of them, some sort of a time limiter, right? To where they, yes. they have to make a decision within a certain amount of time in order to get those bonuses or whatever. Um you know, a uh, limited amount of space, you know, those type scarcity, of things. Scarcity. It's anything, you know, it's urgency, it's scarcity, and it's it's value, right? It bonuses exactly. value, urgency, scarcity, and you have to use those things ethically, right? I mean, I, I don't have only 50 copies of my digital ebook. I mean, that that would be bullshit, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, like, yeah. But if you come out and say, I'm only giving 50 people access to my exactly ebook then you've completely just fixed all your moral issues and you've still you're still able to implement the the urgency slash scarcity piece to get people off their duff to to do something to move on it you just reminded me of something um the power of like cta posts call to action posts like i i can't tell you how many email leads i've gotten or like just like uh, the power of like how many people I've, I've been able to message and get them to convert um, for my affiliate offers or just to my opt-in list by just, you know, being like, hey, uh, for the next 50 people, I'm giving away my free ebook. And it's like you, it's like, it's funny because like you'll have your link where you're giving away the free ebook and they could lift, they could literally just go and click it. And then you're just going to send them the DM. That's going to be like the same thing. But because you send them the DM, they're like, wow. I, it's special now. I, there's a psychology yeah. behind it. There absolutely is. And it feels more exclusive. It feels more personal. Nobody, you know, the big thing that people feel on social media is really they, they're more lurkers than anything. So when there's an opportunity for them to engage or when you create an opportunity to engage, which feels different than the normal scroll um, the normal kind of stalker scroll, lurker scroll, whatever you want to call it. And I, I you know what I mean? Like, it's like yeah. most people just are lurking. They're not, they don't, they don't feel seen by you, the influencer, or you, the, the, the person of authority. They're just lurking. They feel unseen. So when you create that opportunity for them to now kind of engage yeah. and, and be noticed, man, it's powerful. And oh, that's yeah. exactly what you're doing there by bringing them into the DA DMs and saying, hey, you know, you have to send me a DM in the next three hours after this video is posted. There's so many different creative ways that you can create urgency, folks yes. listening. And because uh, remember, there's 300 people <laughs> live listening as well. <laughs> like I'm just talking to you, but I, what I, I, this is such, this is such good information because it's, it's like, you and I sitting here spitballing, I hope reveals to people listening that it's just about you being a little bit more creative, kind of, you can create everything you want and your results will completely change just with small tweaks on how you do things, right? It's a lot of people are posting content and there's no FOMO. There's no reason for anybody to act on it today. So exactly. of course they're not, you know, if there's no urgency, if there's no scarcity, if there's no FOMO, and if there's no time limiter, like you need to reach out and DM me within the next 24 hours after I post this video, if you want this specific information. And the other thing is it's so easy to continue to run different campaigns and, and give different calls to action because it's all you have to do is just create a, a new ebook, create a new Google Doc, create, you know, find a new video and say, I'm going to give away this unique video bonus yep. to anybody who DMs me in the next 24 hours. And then along with that new video bonus or that new Google Doc or whatever that new thing is that you created, of course you 
you add in when you DM them another offer with a time exactly. limiter, with a time limiter. So if they had 24 hours to message you to get the first bonus, hey, if you liked this, P.S., by the way, if you liked this, here's the other bonus that I have for you if you buy this. You, you exactly. take them one step at a time and each step has to be, a com you have to think it through and actually almost kind of create a contingency plan, think, knowing that they're not going to do what you want them to do. You have to, nobody's going to open your DM and say, wow, this was so great. What else do you got? What else can, can I buy exactly. anything from you? There, Nobody's yeah. going to ask you of no. that. So you have to be the traffic controller and use these strategies each in each and every step in order to move that prospect along in the prospect, uh, process. Yeah, because you're, you're exactly right. I mean, because, yeah, I mean, no one's going to actually be like, hmm, what else can they, because how would they know? You know what I mean? So you got to, you got to guide them in the direction. And I, I love that the traffic controller, that's like, that's like the perfect way to describe that. Um, in, in, in the traffic controller also is going to say, imagine this, let me, let me expound, expand on the traffic controller analogy. Hey, come this way. You've got five minutes five minutes to come this way or else I'm letting this guy come. Now, what do you think that guy's doing with a plane full of a hundred people? His ass is he's, on he's, that he's running. He's coming. He's running. Yeah. You got five minutes. Come up, come up. Okay. Stop. Boom. Y'all are coming up. Oh, hold on. Hold on. For the next six hours, I'm letting this lane right here go for the next six, six hours. It's cut off. You're going to have to wait for these people now, right? You see the exactly. traffic you have to have, those clear calls to action and be controlling the audience versus letting them control you. Yes. No, that, that is perfect. I, I, I can't. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the, the power of a perfect analogy. We talked about exactly, that. At, exa exactly. <laughs> yeah. We talked about that at the mastermind, like the power of the perfect analogy is um, unrivaled. It's unmatched in marketing. And in sales, if you can find the perfect analogy in order to deliver what you want in a context that the person you're talking to will understand, you will yes. instantly become 10 times more persuasive. Because now with every situation, including when you're creating content, if I'm talking to people and I'm just spitting this new stuff that I've learned and I'm over it's I know I got to break this down and I got to I got to put it in terms that everybody can understand that's why I've used analogies like the construction analogy of hey you can't just learn how to everything can't be a nail man it's not just about learning how to swing a hammer you got to be able to read the blueprint and exactly. if you only want if if you only want to swing a hammer well that's how you're going to get paid accordingly but if you want to be the guy or gal who shows up to the job calls the shots directs the traffic, reads the blueprint and takes home the biggest check at the, at the end of the job. You got to learn how to read the blueprints, baby. Yeah. So exactly. No. Yeah. I, I, I love that. Yeah. CTA posts have drastically changed my business in the last six months. So, I mean, that's definitely a tool that I honestly encourage every new marketer to learn. Uh, and um, I, I just, it's so crazy because it took me a while to actually learn it. It honestly took about six months and I was like, wow, I should actually start doing this. And then, and then you implement it with reels or YouTube shorts or, you know, whatever. And you, the results, they're, they're ridiculous. I, sometimes I have way too many, like, I'll be like, comment freedom and then I'll send you whatever. And I'll have like a thousand comments and I'm like, I, I'm like, okay, well, this is, this is completely, yeah, it's insane. The power. Well, I, here's one that I'm going to give you a challenge. I'm going to give you a challenge. Okay. Um, because I think you can pull this off. Why don't you begin to try some posts that get people to go to your link so you don't have to DM them, but you still, in order to, 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 qualify and go, and I can give you an example. They have to comment first. So there's three steps to getting this information. Like the post, comment down below and click the link inside of my link. 
in order to when I when I begin sending this information out and I go in, to, you, you got to really think it through and make sure that it's not it's not um, it doesn't come across as kind of, you know, either bullshit or or or, or whatever. Right. But my pro- my my point here is, is that the whole there's a bottleneck that happens with a lot of us when we begin to do too many of the uh, or we have a either video or ad that we're like comment below and I'll send you the info. The challenge that we risk with that is actually getting our accounts deactivated because they the, the platform will look at us like we're spamming people if we're copy and pasting the same message to 50 or 100 different people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. and, and I definitely I, I mean, I've gotten the, uh, you know, the, the pop up on Instagram that says you were doing things too fast, slow down or whatever, stuff like that. So, yeah, it's definitely something to, you know, be wary of. Uh, but, yeah, I uh, it's just it's just crazy. So I, I definitely I'll definitely check that out. It reminds me a lot of when people on YouTube would be trying to do giveaways. They'd be like, you know, comment, like and subscribe. And then you could have the, the opportunity to yeah. get an Amazon gift card or something like that, you know, but that yeah. reminds me a lot of that. So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, that, uh, you know, that's exactly, that's exactly kind of what I'm, what I'm referring to, uh, you know, some of the, some of the, um, um, some of the, uh, the, the influencers did that, the Kim Kardashians and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um, and, uh, it, yeah. So the, 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 the idea here is, is that how do we keep the balance between, um, creating either risk to our accounts or creating bottlenecks because we can't get to everybody. You know what I mean? And the other challenge with the kind of write a comment below, and then I'm going to message you is, is a lot of times those people are hot right then and they have time right then. And if right. I don't get back to them for another 12 or 24 hours because I'm getting through everybody, so much has happened in that person's life. I would almost probably rather have 10% of those people just clicking my link and going for it, right? Right. I mean, oh, yeah. Unless I was unless I was legitimately running, you know, unless I, the, the other thing that I would do, here's another which this, you know, some people might not want to, here's another thing you could do that would be a gangster. And I'm just like spitballing ideas yeah. is you could have people DM your, e- them, your, their email address, right. And say, DM me your email address. And I'm going to have my assistant go through and add it to a list that I'm going to send an email at this exact time in this exact day. And if you have not sent me your, it, it, yes, is there tons yeah, yeah. of manual work for that? There is versus just saying, go, go, go hit my Don't link. Click a link. Yeah. But it's, it's about if you want to create exclusivity while at the same time protecting your account, then there's different ways. You could say, I'm going to take the first hundred email addresses. I mean, there's, there's a lot because now, it's just another way to get a hundred really qualified people. Yes. You manually add them to your list. You're a Weber, you get response, but you know, I guarantee you those people are fired up and hot, you know, oh, if yeah. they've given oh, you yeah. their email address via DM, you know? I mean, cause I, I mean, that just shows you that they're at least a little bit interested. They just need to be a little bit more, you know, persuaded to, to buy whatever offer it is. You just have to push them over the edge. That's essentially it. Because they're, they're they're showing you their interest by DMing you that information or commenting. Exactly. And, you know, if I was, say, today's wet Tuesday and I was going to be sending this email out on Friday at noon or Friday at midnight or whatever, you know how, like, musicians say album dropping midnight Friday, right? And, and people will... Like get excited and like, but anyways, the point is, is that let's just say it was noon on Friday. All my content leading up to that is about that. You know, it's, 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 or some of it anyways, if I'm posting two or three videos a day, then a lot of that content is reminding people on social media that this thing is coming. And I think what a lot of us, what a lot of us don't remember is that 
part of somebody following, engaging in, and engaging is that they're entertained. They're, they're having fun. You know, it feels yeah. like they're going somewhere and something's happening versus just, it's always the same. And there people are naturally gravitated towards chaos and yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know. I, yeah. So it, it just, so I'm definitely going to start implementing some of that though. That's, that's, that's some genius stuff. That was some good stuff that we covered here. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the Nicole says totally using the email and the DM. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. That one's perfect. Well, and there's so many different ways that you could do little things like this. And nowadays it's just really about being creative and, and giving your audience different looks, like give them different looks. It, imagine that you're a pic- pitcher and that, you know, your audience is a batter. And if you've thrown the same pitch at 50 miles an hour, lobbed it right over the plate every single time, you know, it's the, throw them something different, change it up, yeah. get them off, yeah. get them off, get them off their, you know, get them off their heels a little bit, introduce something, be doing something different and new regularly. You don't have to always be doing it. But but to be able to give your audience different looks instead of always having the same front door, switch the front door up. You can even still keep the back of the house the same. Yeah. But it's just about switching the menu. Another analogy for this would be a restaurant. It's like they get they got different specials. Put a little something different on the menu for the regulars. You know what I mean? Yeah, Let yeah, them okay. have a different look for God's sakes. Yeah, because you're still getting them like, yeah, that's perfect. Right? Because like, you know, like you're getting them in the door and then you can just be like, OK, well, today we're doing this instead. And it, it, but you still it's still the same restaurant. It's still they still have the same food. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the reasons why we started this show the way that we did, because even me every day just sitting here talking would eventually get boring to both me and the audience. So it's about giving people a different look, keeping it fresh. How are you know you using your creativity? And some of us got to spray some WD forty up in the old brain, get that baby loosened up. Oh, you know? yeah. oh, oh yeah, and that's and that's kind of like it's funny because like that's my pretty much my whole theme for this year is you know I've been doing things uh, pretty much the same for the, the last well at least especially last year. So like now I'm kind of just. I'm changing things up because I could tell my audience was getting a little bored. So you mm. got to change things up a little Good bit. Word. You got to fatigued, bored, just own yeah. it, just own it. And then you say, how can I change it? And it's like, yeah, man, it's like, hell, it, you know how, you know, you know how to know if your audience is like getting bored or oh, you're bored. You know how to yes. know if your audience is lost, you're lost. You know how to know if your audience isn't clear. You're not, they're not clear. You know how to know if your audience isn't having fun. You're not yeah. having fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Golly. You know? No, that's that's perfect. Yeah, everything's just a self-reflection of yourself. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. guess we got deep there for a second, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true, though, isn't it? It's like I, I have to have realistic expectations on my audience that, that I can't be over here you know, in total fear and lack and you know, just hoping that they're going to do exactly what I want and get frustrated when they don't. And then to expect that they're having a ball and having fun. And, you know, it's, it's a mirror. I mean, they're having fun. If they see they're here to watch you, they're watching you. So if you're not having fun, they're not having, if you're having fun, you're going to suddenly start to see your audience just have fun. Or yeah. if you're doing what you, if you become much more compassionate in your, in, in, or much more kind of, you know, really trying to de- compassionate, I mean, like really trying to deliver value to people, like really trying to think about their situation and not just you trying to make a buck, but you'll see your audience when you switch your intention and Tyler, I'm sure you've seen this. I'm sure when you said you struggled for those first three months, I would assume your kind of intention and your mindset and how you kind of saw this business was there was a a switch that got flipped around that three month. How would you summarize that? I was, I think I was just so focused on making a buck that I I think it came out in the content. I think it came Mm -hmm. out as, um, 
just almost a desperate in a way, just like, come on. I know, I, I know everyone else is doing this. I know I can do it. Why am I not making a buck? And I must have, I think it came out in the content. And I mean, you basically, you get, you get out what you put in. And I think definitely what I was putting in was being desperate and just, they could tell you can, they, your audience can just tell. Mm. And uh, that's, I think as soon as, as soon as I started having fun and, you know, it's changed up my strategy and um, I, I can't like, emphasize the importance of email marketing more than anything else because that's really what changed everything to me for me as well um my email marketing was not just it wasn't good and so basically i would keep going back i would go back every single day but like what can i do to improve this and then eventually breakthrough but i think i also too if you overthink it which i i did that also um if you overthink it and you're just like well this word has to be this word or this phrase or this title has to be exactly this. Then now will also, it's like, it's, it's you just self-destruct. You do. What was the biggest thing that you learned about email marketing that changed things for you or that you realized? Be like intimate with your audience. You know, I'm not telling you to kiss your audience, but I'm saying, you know, basically you're not saying, you're not saying send the old, the D shots or that, not that yeah, kind of like, hey, break it yeah. down for us. Dumb animals out here who are thinking intimate. Oh yeah. Okay. Like, tell like, tell oh, us okay. your secrets. It's like, ah, oh, well, you know, thinking of you now, basically, you know, what does it mean to be intimate in an email when you're, when you're sending an email to a bunch of cold leads, explain that for somebody who who's, who's new on here, who doesn't know what you mean by that. Basically, pick a pick a point, a, a a point in your topic like that your audience can relate with, and like try to really build like a relate, build rapport with them essentially. So basically, what I did was um, I took some of the emails that were templates or email swipes, and I rewrote them in a way that I was like, you know, I was struggling. This is I, uh, you and I aren't that much different. We, I, you know hated my nine to five. I, the system lied to, to me and I know it lied to you guys as well. Um, you know, I, I would come home exhausted at the end of the day. I couldn't see my friends or family. Um, basically really like emphasizing my story, my struggles. And, you know, hopefully they would be like, Oh, I can relate with that. And then that basically builds like this relationship with them. Like this guy, this guy's me. This guy's mm -hmm. literally me. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically, you want to, you want to build a connection with your audience and you just need to find a common pain point and you need to find out what your audience is really looking for. Um, because if you have to think about who's your target audience. So for a lot of people with, with legendary, I've noticed it's, um, parents. So, you know, a, a, a video that I will be seeing is like, you know, I was a struggling parent, you know, I never got to see my kids. I never got to go to their soccer games. Um, I, I never got, my, my marriage was failing. And, um, and, a, and a lot of people are going to be like, wow, mine is too. Or my, I never get to see my kids. Or, you know, my relationship is just struggling because I'm always at my job and I'm working 100 hours a week. And you just, you, you basically just, you relay with them and they're like, wow, this person gets me. And then that's basically, you basically just branch all your content and it's really not that hard to persuade people after that point. Yeah. Because they believe you, they believe that you're not somebody who's out to hurt them or get them or whatever. They feel like you're on their side. I want to highlight something that you said that was brilliant and just very simple and clear. Finding a common pain point. Wow. That was, you know, that was well said because it's not always about finding common ground, right? I mean, <clears throat> if you were and I both like the New York Yankees, I mean, that's not really intimate, right? right? That's not, that's not, that's, that's, that's the opposite of intimate. Actually talking about sports and weather is the opposite of intimacy. Um, imagine yeah, that, can... right? I mean, the, 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 when you talk about sports and weather with a stranger, that's a very safe topic. You can usually talk about with anybody anywhere and it's known. That's a known fact. So if somebody is going to watch your content, what are you doing to make it different than the very simple conversation that they would have in a line in Walgreens with a stranger talking about sports and weather? That's not intimate. 
that's superficial. And so that common pain point that you just highlighted that I just heard that and was like, man, that's it. When you, when you, when you take it there, right, Tyler, now all of a sudden you've become vulnerable. And one of the key elements of intimacy is vulnerability. As a matter of fact, you, there is no intimacy without vulnerability. There is zero because intimacy means into me, you see, and I have to open myself up and be vulnerable and give you something that I wouldn't normally give the person standing in line at Walgreens. I have to give you something different to connect to. That's what came up for me when you said that brother. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I couldn't have said it better. I mean, I, that's like the perfect sum It's like, you know, it's just like, you have to be vulnerable. If you can, you have to make your content, make your audience perceive you as vulnerable, but also give them value. Yeah. And I think that that's really the key. If you can do that, then, you know, you, you more than likely will have success in your, in whatever business it is, but they yeah. want to see you as one of basically themselves, not as uh, a salesperson. But the next version of them, who they want to become. And yes. you don't have to, yes. you know, like if I'm just like, hey, um, you know, uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I, you know, I'm writing the email to you. You're my, my, my lead on my, my email list. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, life really sucks sitting in, you know, I, I basically last Saturday, my, my daughter came to me and said, daddy, not another Saturday that you have to leave the house. I feel like I never spend time with you, you know? And then, well, guys go ahead and click the link and I'll, I'll, I'll see you on the next email. It's like, that's not, no. You've you've identified a common pain there, but they want to know the the piece that gets them to take action is how you turn that struggle into a strength, how you exactly. turn that mess into a message. You have to turn the mess into a message. The common pain point is so important because that's where they connect. But in 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 the next breath or or a breath or two, you got to give a little hope shot. <laughs> right. You, you have to give them the solution. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, you have to, yeah. Because like, yeah, that, that's basically the whole thing this with this business is like finding out what your audience has that is a common pain point and then basically relating with them, creating, making yourself perceive them as, or no, actually I said that wrong, make them perceive you as vulnerable. And then basically you give them the solution that allowed you to get out and then they can get out too, because yeah. Get the yeah. And Brandy made a great comment. I'm diagnosed depression. So I reach those that don't think they're worthy or good enough to be successful, that there's someone who's been there uh, and that there's still fight left in, in them. That's the people that navigate to me. And what a, what a, what a wonderful, um, what a wonderful example of what we're talking about just right here, because She's leading with that common pain point. And, and in many ways, for the last 12 years of me doing this, I've done the same thing. I've led with those common pain points, which is that I had major struggle in my life. Mine came in the form of drug addiction and, and some homelessness. And that is vulnerability I'm just giving you right up front. That's just, that's a big kind of for me, I chose to do that because it makes a big impact right up front and it lets people know I'm not here to bullshit. I'm here. I'm here to keep it real. Right. And then, um, you know, I, I, uh, you know, that allows people to feel comfortable, you know, with me that I'm not going to portray myself as perfect, but then I immediately move into, and, and, and I think that, so, you know, you can branch out whatever your, um, whatever your challenge is. Uh, it's just about picking it and focusing on it. For me, I focused more on that aspect of my story and sprinkled in the fact that I worked construction with my dad or whatever, but I was at a certain place in my life that that was kind of the, I had just gotten clean. So you, it's also good to be talking, you know, talk about, look around in your life and ask yourself what's really going on. You know, how yeah. can you actually really take, I think a, a brilliant marketer takes their surroundings and what's going on in current events and creates a message with it. That That is marketing. 
you know, so yeah. you have oh, yeah. to make something, nothing and turn it into something. And uh, whether you're bonding with people over depression, we had the lady on a couple of weeks ago who her content and entire TikTok and social media accounts and whole business is about setting boundaries. And, you know, she sold, sells physical boundary cards, but she could also just as easily sell all of that information digitally and package it in courses, coaching and events. But my point is, is that that even her story got started out of this whole idea of I started doing this in my own life. It was a struggle for me. And here's how it was a struggle for me. And then all of a sudden you start relating. Hey, hold on a second. That's a struggle for me too. And that really hits the nail on the head and boom, you're hooked because that person's talking about the real shit that you're experiencing every day. And right. then she moves into the solution and it's, 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 yeah. it's so powerful. It just works. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I, I, it's crazy. We've already been talking for almost 56 minutes, but since we're, I know we're probably getting close to the end. I want to end it basically with something, you know, like your value proposition, you know, what is going to, what's going to set you different from everyone else. Um, I mean, that, that's something you need to, when you're really creating this online business, you need to sit down and you need to be like, well, how am I going to be different from this, this guy with this, with his mustache, who's making content about websites and marketing? How can I really set myself apart and tell my story and come a, find a common pain point with my audience? And how do I want my audience to perceive me? And if you can do that, and then you can, if you do these, uh, if you do the, uh, the CTA posts, then I, you got it. I mean, you, we, we live in a day and age right now where the lead, I don't know if traffic is going to be this good always. Okay. You have to keep in mind, you know, right now is a golden age of just creating content. So you have to, if you want to start, you need to start right now. You, you can't, you can't wait anymore. It's already been a couple of years. I, I mean, I started posting in 2020 and I'm just like, when's this, when's this going to end? So I'm just like, I gotta, I gotta bust it out now. I gotta keep making content. That motivates me every single day to keep making content. You, yeah. I want to tell you something funny before we end. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. I've thought that way for over 10 years. <laughs> And it's great, brother, because it's like it keeps you on your toes, right? You, you're waiting right. for the other shoe to drop. Like in a way, like my past life experience made me feel kind of think like that, waiting for like something bad to happen. Like I think a lot of us think like that. It's like, oh, my God, this is not going to last. Like, you know, it's it's just it's part of our kind of survival skills. You know what I mean? Like all of us have that. In, we're 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 looking out for the saber tooth tiger, but now it's, I'm looking out for my YouTube channel to get, you know, bug or whatever it is. Oh, exactly. Not, exactly. Not yeah. a saber tooth tiger anymore. That's chasing me through the jungle. It's, I might lose my TikTok account or whatever <laughs> it is, but, um, yeah. I, I don't know. I thought that I've thought the same way for over 10 years, Tyler, that I better get it in now because it's not going to last. And you know what, honestly, it's just keep getting, get, it keeps getting better and, and better. The opportunity keeps getting better and better. But that doesn't mean that I should sit back and just be like, hey, it's always here because um, it's it may, it may not. I don't know. But um, it is better than it's ever been right now, right here, right now. It, regardless of what the economy is doing, recession, no recession, whatever, people, the majority of people in the normal economy and marketplace don't even know what we're doing. They don't even get it. They think that we're just screwing around on TikTok and Facebook and that we should get real jobs and probably none of us are making any money. They have no idea. The common person does has no clue what we're doing. Exactly. No, you're right. hundred percent. So, I mean, in a way where most of us are ahead of our time. Hey brother, dude, um, this was your fifth time on. And before I let you go, I just want to ask you, tell you, Thank you for not just going through our education and going out, but like, thanks dude for coming back and w being willing to have such, such good conversations and really be so helpful to everybody, dude. Like really thank you and happy new year, brother. I'm looking forward hey. to seeing you crush it this year. A happy new year. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on here again. You know, I hop on these with this, the goal to help as many people as I possibly can. I just, you know, I that was my common pain point. You know, I wish I had someone that I, that did this for me. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, it's so helpful. We've got, I mean, if you all are want to hear more from Tyler, just go scroll through our wake up legendaries and, and there's four more awesome conversations. And isn't it so cool to be able to see your journey too, like to be able to have that recorded in conversations. I mean, I have interviews of me done back and, and they're so valuable to me because I'm able to kind of see how far I've come and actually see my own journey. And isn't that, it's gotta be cool to see that. I know it is for me, man. Oh yeah. And seeing the growth, like looking back at my our first video together, I'm like, who is this person? This is not, <laughs> you know, that's just so crazy because it's like, look how far I've come since then. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I I love that you do this. It's it's honestly, it's great. All right, man. Well, hey, happy New Year, brother. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Happy New Year. Yeah. All right. Thanks. See it. All right, my friends, you can go and follow Tyler. Uh, we've got his Instagram profile up at Tyler Z Wise. Tyler. T-Y-L-E-R-Z-Wise, W-I-S-E, all one word, no underscores, no dashes. Um, you can go and find him on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, anywhere else from Instagram, or probably just type in his name on any of those channels, and you'll find him there as well. But this guy's an internet ninja at this point. Uh, we don't know where he is, where he's going to be, what he's going to be doing next time we're talking to him. He'll probably have 15 more accounts. And you just talk to people sometimes and you're very clear about why they've gotten where they're at. You know, he said he struggled for three months. He, he's gone through all that. The, 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 a lot of the same things that all of us go through at the very beginning, not wanting to hear ourselves, see ourselves, watch ourselves, you, you know, um, and we're all faced with kind of the same decision. It's like, either do it or don't, you know? And when you listen to people, it's so helpful to, to see that they're really no different than I am. I mean, they really just made a different decision and they're better because of it. They're better because of it. And so 2023, there's going to be, I mean, this community is only going to get better and better. We're about to roll out some things in the next couple of weeks that are just going to add so much more value, more than Double the value instantly for all Blueprint students without charging any more money and without charging any past customers any more money. Just instantly double the value, right? So there's never been a better time than to say, hey, look, I'm ready to make the decision for myself too, instead of just watching everybody else do it, thinking that I'm not either worthy or I can't. You can. You can. And even though Tyler looks like a completely different person. Now he walked through the same exact front door that you did, that I did, that we all did. So let's rock. Be legendary. See you back here tomorrow for another episode.